everyone and welcome to today's episode of the vlog now if you've been following this channel for a while you will know that i am a proper petrol head and before i bought the car that i've got now the golf gte um you would have seen my s3 my um, fiat 500 above um, so you would imagine that my next car would be a better version of those so I would love to own an RS3 and at some point in the near future that's what I'm going to have as my next car so the S3 will go and it will be replaced by an RS3 because it's the ultimate Audi as far as I'm concerned unless of course you're talking about the RS6, the RS4 and of course the R8, the legends and um, Audi if you would like to give me an R8 as a test car, as a press car I would be very appreciative of that so why did I buy a Golf GTE? I mean what's so special about that car? I mean it's a 1.4 TSI engine with a turbo on it with a hybrid motor on it it makes no sense it's a slow car it's not necessarily a fast car so what made me buy this car good question what i could say to you is because of my green credentials yes i interested in saving the planet no you, you're not going to buy that for a second and we spoke about that in another video although i am interested in you know the environment but that's not the reason why i bought this car um, the reason why I bought this car is because the number of features that it has. Number one, it's got a petrol engine combined with electric motor. I like that. For me, I've driven one electric, pure electric car. It wasn't the best car in the world. It was a BMW i3. Yep, I can hear you yawning already. However, that car really helped me to appreciate how powerful electric cars are. And of course, when you look at Teslas and what they've achieved with their vehicles, it goes without saying. The only thing missing from an electric car is that pure sound of an engine. And of course, us guys, we like the sound of our engine, don't we? For me, it's the sound of a five-cylinder Audi engine, which is just phenomenal. best sounding in the world of course in America you American guys you like your V8s and your your big engines <laughs> less said about that the better but of course for me I couldn't let go of the petrol engine altogether so to but I still love the benefits of an electric engine and that's where the GTE comes in on its own because it's a an amalgamation and marriage of these two technologies now one of the great things about that is that the um, 1.4 engine isn't like your conventional 1.4 engine that you get in most of your Audis that car that engine is a solid engine it's had many years of uh, um, and tried and tested technology. However, in the GTE, it comes with a difference. And that difference is that it doesn't have an alternator. It doesn't have the uh, condenser for the AC. So the engine is a free spirit. Absolutely just a 1.4 liter engine with a turbocharged bolted on the back and nothing else to pull other than the drivetrain of the car. And of course some heavier batteries but it is assisted by the electric motor and that was the appeal the second appeal was the fact that it has an electric motor and with electric motor you get maximum torque with very little rpm so the minute you touch that accelerator and you push that accelerator you get that maximum power and that is phenomenal for a car of that size so volkswagen obviously looked at this car and decided you know what the golf being a classic car a car that everybody knows they use this as a platform to test out this technology now going forward in the future this is going to be the way that a lot of manufacturers will go for the next 10 years until 2030 or the next eight years pretty much until 2030 where the ban of new electric vehicles will come into play and then everyone will have no choice but to buy a brand new electric motor let's take a look at the car some of its unique features oh and before we look at the car if you like this t-shirt you can get it in our merch store click on the store below you can get this in a variety of colors so this is the gte power 
and a picture of the car it looks great right let's take a look at the car okay so here's the gte back now i have had the the back painted so it is better it's still not quite right but it is a million times better than what it was now when you watch it through here it does look whiter than it actually is but it is a much better match now gary had a lot of problems with it because of the paint they use which was i don't know what it was it was horrible but thank you for all your comments that you gave last week it was a very emotive video that obviously caused a lot of you uh, to uh, want to um, express your views right let's take a look under the bonnet okay so looking under the bonnet now now on this side you've got your engine on this side you've got uh, your electric motor which is down below you've got your coolant for your batteries so basically believe it or not you have to keep the batteries cool in the electric motor because they do overheat or can heat up now normally down this side here you will have your alternator and then you'll have your condenser for the air conditioning but because this car doesn't have that instead it has a dc converter and it's that that charges the vehicle and that gets its vehicle or its power from the batteries that means that this motor is a free agent in fact you can't see it but down there you've got the wheel that normally will be for the uh, fan belt for the alternator and the condenser that is just freely spinning so this motor is literally just pushing the car rather than pulling all the accessories that are run that runs with it making it much more efficient than your conventional vehicle of course it does mean that the electric motor takes or the battery takes all of that load etc so the battery for the vehicle and that does have an effect on the actual running of the vehicle itself so the battery load when you're charging a vehicle on paper this car should get 30 miles from a charge but the reality is are that it doesn't quite get that okay so i'm going to give you an example of how much load the battery takes so on screen now you should see down here that we've got 10 miles of range if we were to drive on battery now at the moment the ac system is on when i turn it off you'll see that change to 12 miles so it kind of helps you appreciate the kind of load that the battery has on it when you've got all the systems running and of course the car is a lot quieter now looking at the dashboard now now this dashboard if there's anything that i would criticize this car it's the dashboard being very busy fortunately this is a virtual cockpit and you can configure the dashboard to look how you want so this one here i've got it configured to show me all of the various settings so it, on here you see it's telling me how much charge i've got by the uh, fuel gauge or the uh the imitation fuel fuel gauge over here i've got my petrol but just above the petrol gauge you can see the speed the um, um speedometer and that's it although i do have the dial but for a, a, a numerical reference that's the number there and then of course above that we have how much range we have with our petrol and when you're driving a car just spotting that can be a little bit busy in terms of your eyes scanning the page which kind of takes your eyes off the road slightly so if there's any criticism i would say that's probably just that and then of course everything that's happening around you on this when you're in electric mode you've got various needles going left right and center and that in itself can be a little bit of a distraction in terms of controls for the car we've got all our functions here the middle one we ignore that's the sound generator so i can press that when i'm in electric mode to make the car sound like an engine i never press that button as you can probably tell on the top we've got the gte button i always drive in gte mode because i love the power output or we can select our different e modes now if i select the mode i can bring it up on screen here and then i can select through the various different modes of vehicles but like i said i always run it in gte mode and uh, when you run it in gte mode it comes up on the dashboard and tells you that gte mode is off or on okay so this is the reason why I like this car. You cannot get that in a standard uh, combustion engine vehicle. With the electric motor combined with the petrol motor, you get a massive boost of power. The standard form, this car is hitting 
or hitting 350 newton meters of torque for a 204 brake horsepower car a 1.4 liter brake uh, car that's a phenomenal amount of power that is a good bit of power and of course you get the best of both worlds with this because you get a vehicle that is a small engine vehicle that runs in GTE mode and you're getting 200 brake horsepower that's normally reserved for vehicles with a two liter engine and you certainly aren't getting the fuel economy and that is one of the reasons why I run this car in GTE mode because I'm getting the best of both worlds I am getting a performance car but without the standard performance headache of a vehicle running a big engine so around town I'm averaging around 40 to 50 miles a gallon and that's me driving the car in hooligan mode <laughs> And when I say in hooligan mode, that's me just putting my foot down everywhere, enjoying the torque. And that's the real pleasure of this car. The torque is just there in abundance. And the way that the engine and the electric motor works in combination, Volkswagen have done a fantastic job. Of course, this is the same engine and electric motor arrangement that is in the Audi um, A3. And, um, and also in the Passat GTE as well. So they all use exactly the same drivetrain. And over the last uh, five to six years that the GTE has been around, that's been perfected and refined. In the early GTEs, it was reported to be a little bit clunky with the gear change uh, on the, when the combustion engine uh, kicked in. That's certainly not the case here. And of course, in the Mark A, that's been refined even further. The Mark A, of course, been able to uh, take advantage of an additional 40 brake, 41 brake horsepower that has a peak power of 241, 245, sorry, whereas this car here is 204 combined. But that doesn't take away from your driving pleasure. It really doesn't. And the way that the car delivers the 204 brake horsepower is, is quite unique and really enjoyable. Okay, so we're coming up to a dual carriageway now. We're going to merge in with traffic and I'm just going to give the car some welly. Now, I work around eight miles away from home. On a full charge, this car will give me around between 24 and 22 miles. Now, if I drive to work on that, I will barely make it home on just pure battery power alone. Now, although that sounds disappointing, you gotta take into consideration that um, when these cars are um, tested, they are tested in perfect conditions. Whereas the average motorist, when they drive in their cars, you will drive around hills, you go up hills, you go down hills, and although this car does have a, a decent regen, you're not going to fully charge the battery on, on, on the, you're not going to get much power back from the regen. Put my foot down again, and there she goes. That instant boost is really, really good. Anyway, I digress. So when you consider the hills, etc., that you go through, also the fact that you're driving the car with um, AC, so at the moment it's quite hot outside, the temperature outside is 23 and a half degrees, so it's fair, it's quite warm. It's going to use up a lot of power for that. You saw what happened when we changed the, um, when we turned the AC on. So the realities are that you're going to use up a lot of power um, just, just running the car. Um, so with electric cars especially, don't uh, take that mileage or your distant range with a pinch of salt. Of course, the other advantage of having a plug-in hybrid is you don't have that range anxiety that you have with a standard EV. Now, I remember when I drove the BMW i3, um, that set my range anxiety for the roof because I was taking that car in the new forest and there is nowhere to charge in the new forest, okay? There are a couple of places 
but when you go to those places, they really don't exist or charging network is, is broken. So, you know, that's a subject of many videos that people put out on YouTube. But with a, a plug-in EV, you don't have that same anxiety because if you run out of juice, the car will continue running on petrol power. So you have that luxury of using both. To charge this car, I think it, it works out about £1.70 to charge the vehicle. You're getting about 24 miles out of that, which is pretty good. Now, where's this guy going? Yeah, that's it, mate. Just come right in front of me because you can. The guy with the trailer, he's got the wrong lane. So, um, oh, look at that. I love that power. That is fantastic. Yeah, so, um, so, so yeah, it's about £1.70 to, to charge it, and you don't have that same um, anxiety. And because it's a smaller battery, obviously, it's a 30 mile or green reality, a 24 mile range battery. It takes less time to charge as well. So, on a granny charger at home, this car will take around three hours to charge, two and a half hour. Um, give or take so it's not that bad um, and so if you charge it overnight it'll be ready in the morning and that is where the other feature of this car comes into play that we'll talk about okay so we've now come to the end of our run and I have I mean, we haven't gone far you know we've done about eight ten miles but you can see the kind of um, mpg that I'm getting on that 39.5 and that's, uh, you know, giving a car some beans. You certainly wouldn't get that in the S3 or any sort of other performance car. And that's the beauty and the benefits of having the um, EV as part of the um, combustion engine. So let's talk about the app that comes with this car. So with the GTE Advance, you get the option of having the Go Connect or Connect Go app. There are two apps in the range. One of them isn't so good. The Connect Go though, I would advise you to get this because it really is worth its money. So here it's showing me how many miles I've got in the tank and also the uh, electric range. Now, this isn't real time, so it will um, update um, periodically if I pull down it tends to then do a, a, a back-end system update and it really only does that when the car has been shut off at the moment the car is still on um, so just going through it the feature that I love the, the best is the departure time so with the departure time what I can do is I can go into that and I can tell it the car what time I'm leaving each day for work and then when the car's plugged in, it will then make sure that the car is fully charged and ready for that time. If I just plug the charger in now, the charger will charge. It will charge the car and then it will then, um, um, you know, when it's complete, it will stop. The benefit of setting a departure time um, comes into play when you want to set the temperature of the car as well. So here I can set the air conditioning in the vehicle. I can play with the temperature. I can go up, I can go down. Um, and then if I set that as part of my departure time, the car will be hot in the winter or it will be cool in the summer. And I've used it a couple of times or a few times when I'm going to work when it, I know it's going to be a hot morning before I leave. And it's been wonderful to get in the car and it's nice and cool. In the winter, you can also turn on the window heating. Um, I won't turn this on now because if I do, it will air it out because the car is running. Um, so like I said, it works when the car is stationary and then what happens is the app sends a signal to the car and then sets it. If the doors are open, a lot of cars do this with their, a lot of the apps that are coming online now. I can um, uh, close the door so the car at the moment it's telling me that the door is open because that was the last registered um, statement that the car had that the day was open um, and it's also telling me that the car is not charging and uh, there are a number of other things that I can do as well um, I can close the windows I can turn the lights off if I've left them on and, um, and I can also pick up driving data and my destination so my destinations or driving data is what I use to figure out what those are what Bill and Ben were doing with the car last week so there's not much more than it does but actually what it what it does do it does very well so it's worth taking a look at that if you are considering buying the Golf GT
Okay, so now you know why I've bought this car and now you know why we, it's gonna be on the channel for a little while. So, hope you've enjoyed this. Um, next week we are back on the tools. So we've got this, which I need to fit on the car, which is a straight through exhaust. So this is gonna give me a back box delete. So we're gonna delete the back box and fit this on there, which I'm looking forward to doing. As you can imagine, and I'm just waiting for the rear valance to come, hence the reason why we haven't done that this week. So, don't forget to subscribe down here if you are a casual subscriber or a casual viewer. Click on the bell notification so you're notified whenever we release a new video. And don't forget if you want one of these t-shirts, we do them in a variety of colours. Look at the link below, you can have your own GTU Power t-shirt. Excellent guys, have a good week and we will see you on the next one.